Welcome back to Akamai Developer. Load testing is part of any critical infrastructure maintenance, but how are you actually supposed to do it? Thankfully, there's a free, open source and industry standard way of performing such testing, Apache JMeter. Now, JMeter is a free tool that you can use to check how well your websites and your applications perform when many people are using them all at once. In this video, you'll learn about setting up load testing and how to use JMeter to test your sites. Load testing is a way to check how well a website or application works when lots of people are using them at the same time. This helps us figure out how your site's going to behave during busy times and what changes you might need to make to keep things running smoothly. In load testing, we simulate different levels of traffic and typical user activities. This lets us see how quickly our site responds and how much resources it might use. The information we get from load testing is invaluable. It can tell us if our system can handle the number of visitors we expect to see, or if we have more resources allotted than we need. By adjusting our infrastructure based on these tests, we can make sure we have the best experience for our users while also saving money. So why use JMeter? Well, it's a free tool that's used for load testing and it's built in Java. It's very popular and fairly easy to use, making it a good choice for checking how well our sites or apps are gonna perform under load. Since it's free and supported by a large community, it's also a very cost-effective option for your enterprise. Now, before we start, we're actually gonna need some kind of infrastructure to actually test. For this tutorial, I've set up a simple Next.js application hosted on the Akamai Cloud. Now, we have a video on how to set up your own applications on Akamai, and if you're new to Akamai, you can actually use the links below to get some free credit to help you get started. Now that we have our infrastructure set up, let's move on to setting up JMeter. The first thing that we're gonna need is Java. If you don't have the Java uh, virtual machine installed on your machine, you can head over to java.com and download the build for whatever version of operating system you have on your machine. I'm on Windows right now, so I'll go ahead and click that. And then we're gonna go to the download option. Now you're gonna download Apache JMeter. You can head over to jmeter.apache.org or you can use the link in the description and we're just gonna click on the .zip file here. We'll go ahead and download that. Now I've extracted the zip file and we're gonna find it right here in my uh, home directory. So let's go ahead and go into Apache JMeter 5.6.3. The name of the directory might be a little bit different depending on uh, which version you are using. Now let's go into the bin directory and let's go down here and find jmeter.bat. On Windows, you use .bat. On another platform, you might use uh, jmeter.sh. So we'll just double click on this and it'll open a command prompt. And then on this other screen, it'll open up Apache JMeter. Now what we wanna do is go into file and we're gonna click templates. And we're gonna go down here and select build a web test plan. We're gonna hit create. And now you should see we have build a web test plan and you can give this a new name if you want. Let's just say uh, that we're gonna test Next.js app. And after a moment, you should see it uh, take effect here. Now let's go ahead and click on scenario one. Scenarios are going to be a, a cohort of simulated users. We can specify the number of users that we want, the ramp up period that it's going to take to hit your website with this traffic. Um, we're gonna do the number of times we want to hit the website with traffic and the duration of the actual connections. Now, for this video, we're gonna set the number of users to 50. We're gonna set the ramp up period to one second. We're going to uncheck infinite and set five for the loop count. And for the duration, we're just gonna set it to 30. Now, we're done on this page, but we're gonna expand scenario one here and we're gonna to go to request defaults. Now, what we're gonna do on this page is specify where we actually want our test to target. Now I have my node application running, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit copy on the IP address, and then I'm gonna uh, pop that into the server name or IP field. And we're gonna specify port 3001 here because that's the port I have next running on. And that should be everything we need to do on this page. However, we need to specify where they're going to target on the application. So let's go ahead and hit home page. Uh, and we don't have to specify this stuff because we've already done that in the HTTP request default. Um, so we could specify some path name here. So it could be slash uh, user or it should it could be anything, but we're gonna leave it as a forward slash so that it hits on the uh, homepage for our application. And then we're gonna expand homepage and we're gonna go down to assertions. 
Now, assertions are going to be where we classify the responses from the web server. Now, there's a lot of ways that we could assert results based on the response that we get from the server. We could check uh, for request headers, request data, response codes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but we're, what we're going to do here is we're going to use the text response. And what we're going to do is actually open up our next app, which again is running on port 3001. So let's go ahead and right click and go to view page source. Now this is just plain HTML that the, uh, that the server is responding with. And what we want to do is find some kind of value that's going to be on a correct page a, a successful page. Um, so we're just going to copy this. And then we're going to go back into here and we'll just paste this in here. Now, any page that ha returns this result is going to be classified as a successful test. Anything that doesn't have this result uh, in the HTML source is going to be classified as a, as a failure. Now let's go ahead and click on nextjs.app and we're gonna go up here and hit save test plan as. We're gonna save our plan uh, in a plans directory. I had to make this, um, it didn't exist before. We'll just save this as next-js-app.jmx. And we should be good to go here. Now, if we uh, close this uh, on Windows 11 and on Mac and Linux, you can uh, click right click in your bin directory and go ahead and hit open in terminal. So the first thing we wanna do here is actually we're gonna make a directory we're going to say next JS report. Cool. Now you don't want to run tests through the GUI because it can slow things down and it can skew the results. So that's why we're going to use the command line to do this. We're going to type in dot slash J meter dash, and this will put it into uh, command line mode rather than GUI mode. And then we're going to specify our test, which is going to be in dot slash plan plans. Uh, slash next JS app dot JMX. And we're going to type in dash L for the log directory. And we're going to hit dot slash logs. And then we want to set an actual log file that we want to use. So we're going to say next JS app dot JTL. And then we're going to da type dash E and dash e tells jmeter to create an actual report of our findings here of our of our test and then we're going to specify an output so dash o and for dash o we're going to type in our uh report directory so we're going to say um dot slash next js report this must be an empty directory or else it will throw an error and after a few moments, we should end up with a report directory or a report uh, file that we can browse. And there we go. Now we have a finished report or a finished test. There are no errors. That's pretty good to see. Let's go up here and go to, actually it should be down at the bottom because we created it. Uh, and now we have our actual report content. So if we double click on index, we should see, boom, we have our source file, this is the test that we actually uh, used, or actually this is the log that we output, uh, and we have 100% passing rate. Now there's so much more to JMeter, uh, I can't cover it all here, but if you'd like to have us do more of these type of videos, let us know in the comments below. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Again, if you're new to Akamai, you can spin up your own compute instances uh, with some free credit. Uh, use the link in the description to get some of that. With that being said, thank you all for being here with me in this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.